Welcome back to our weekly environmental news report. First news. Drones from the startup Biocarbon Engineering are about to plant an entire forest in the delta of the Irrawaddy River in Myanmar. For the past five years, villagers have been manually planting 2.7 million mangrove trees, but these new drones can plant as many as 100,000 trees in a single day, leaving the local community to focus on taking care of the younger trees. Mangroves are crucial to the ecosystem in that they filter the water and provide habitat for fish, while also protecting the coastline from storms. In the operating process, mapping drones first collect data about soil quality and topography, which is used to determine the best locations to plant the best species. Then, a second group of drones follows the map and plants the seed pods, firing them quickly enough to assure they penetrate the soil. The company will begin the program in the area in September, along with Worldview International Foundation, a nonprofit organization. President Evo Morales of Bolivia has approved a new law allowing a 190-mile highway to run through the Isiboro Secure Indigenous Territory and National Park, known as Tipnis. Tipnis is an Amazon biodiversity hotspot almost the size of Jamaica and home to 14,000 mostly indigenous people. Morales defended the road by accusing developed countries of enforcing, quote, colonial environmentalism in the nation. While the majority of local authorities and the governor of Beni, Bolivia's main Amazon region, backed the road, rival political parties and the Catholic Church opposed the law, joining activists and indigenous groups in marches across the country. Said Fernando Vargas, a Tipnis indigenous leader, this is the beginning of the destruction of protected areas in Bolivia and indigenous people's territory. Wayne Lauder, a leading wildlife conservationist from South Africa, was fatally shot last week in Tanzania, where he had worked to stop poaching and the illegal ivory trade. He was 51 years old. Since 2009, Lauder was a director and co-founder of the PAMS Foundation, an NGO that provides conservation and anti-poaching support to communities and governments in Africa. Lauder was one of the most well-known and committed conservationists in the international conservation community. His work included training village game scouts across Tanzania as part of his belief that, quote, communities were the best protectors of the continent's animals. Earlier this year, heavy rainfall and flooding caused chaos in Lagos, Nigeria, one of Africa's most populated cities. Flooding remains a recurring phenomenon in Nigeria, the two main factors being climate change and poor urban planning. Rainfall patterns over the past 40 years in the country suggest that rainstorms are getting more intense. Areas at risk include Lagos, a coastal city, as well as the Niger Delta region, which has many low-lying towns and villages. However, infrastructure is lacking in these areas even as urbanization is quickening, worsening the effects of storms and flooding. Coping measures for the nation include early warning and rapid response systems, flood data gathering and modeling, proper urban and spatial planning, flood emergency preparedness, and political will. The Royal Schiphol Group of the Netherlands has announced that all of its business units, which includes major Dutch airports, will run on sustainable power in 2018. Starting in 2020, all of the renewable energy will come from new Dutch wind farms built by the company Ineco. The clean energy will power airports such as Amsterdam Airport Schiphol and total 220 gigawatt hours annually for the next 15 years. Said Joos Nehaus, president and CEO of the Royal Schiphol Group, for our new energy contract, we wanted nothing but sustainable power generated in the Netherlands. That's all for this week's environmental news report. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and help promote environmental awareness. 